object of this presentation is to demonstrate the effect of MER-17, a new blocking agent, against the development of LSD-25 psychosis. We have used two healthy graduate students in psychology as subjects, but time permits us to show only one. On the first experimental day, Ronnie, aged 22 and weighing 75 kilograms, was given 100 gamma of LSD-25 in distilled water orally. This is a very small quantity of LSD-25, but all investigators report that it is enough to produce a temporary psychotic dissociation state in any healthy adult. The scene which follows shows what happened to Ronnie after he drank the LSD-25 solution. And if you will follow the clock, you will be able to note time intervals accurately. Now, how do you feel after an hour? Uh, like I uh, should be getting sick. Uh, it's, uh, uh, but it's different in that I'm not. I mean, I'd be sick by this time if I were you going to. You feel almost a nausea? Almost is a good word. Yeah. Anything else? That dryness of throat, but I, I'm a, uh, it feels as though if I did take a drink or something, well, uh, I wouldn't keep it, so uh, I just, uh, and there is a, uh, I have to uh, maintain my attention. It's an effort to, uh, to uh, well, talk to you right now, for instance, uh, uh, realities, believe me. Well, you were talking to Ronnie. Uh, Ron, a, a while ago we separated you and Dick. Do you have any idea why we did that? Uh, no, it's, uh, uh, yes, I do. Uh, you just separated us to see how we would react. Uh, you felt, though, that we were separating you to see how you alone reacted. And you felt that we were watching you? Is that right or wrong? No, I, uh, uh, you haven't been watching me on the radio. You don't think we're trying to pull anything on you? No. Well, why did you assume that particular line of inquiry was running about the separation of the two boys? Uh, because I felt at the time of separation that Ronnie did have some very real paranoid feelings and felt as though we separated uh, the two of them so we could spy on Ronnie alone. Mm -hmm. And yet when he sat down before the camera, he didn't voice any of those paranoid ideas. No, I think it's interesting that he was able to mobilize his defenses and to uh, deny that he did have those feelings at the time. I feel that they were really there, and I think he did uh, show other evidences of paranoid feelings. Ronnie, you look tired, are you? Uh, yeah. Have you got anything particular to report to me? No. Uh, do you feel slowed up? Decidedly. How is your mood? <coughs> Are you <coughs> happy? No. You feel gay? No. No emotion. No emotion at all. Does it seem like you've been here a great long time? I've lost all uh, time perception. Uh, It's probably sometime in the afternoon, is all I can tell you. So. Have you had any visual phenomena or any auditory phenomena? I was in on the couch. Uh, I was uh, uh, nothing that can describe. But there were there were a lot of uh, colors and, and uh, things taking shapes. So. Were they geometric patterns, or were they just sort of like a batik? Sort of run together or what? Um, I'm sorry, what, uh, what were you? You forgot what I asked you. Uh, oh, the uh, uh, auditory uh, visual thing. Uh, yeah, we're geometric in shape, I'd say. Mm -hmm. 
Anything you'd like to do right now? No. If you had Aladdin's lamp and could do anything in the world you want to do right now, what would you like to do? Uh, get rid of this nervousness. Uh, apprehensive. Do you feel as though you're in contact with this situation and with us and with people around us? I don't know. Ronnie, have you been sleeping for the last few minutes? Um, not exactly. No. You've been lying down on bed. Yeah. Are you thinking about anything in particular? What did I ask you, Ryan? Um, <clears throat> you asked me if I were thinking about anything. Are you worried? No, I don't think so. You've been lying down, you haven't been talking. If I asked you how you felt, could you describe the way you feel? What did I ask you, Ryan? Six hours since you took that drink. Are you still feeling badly? Yeah. Uh, do you know where you are? Yeah. Where are you? Christ Hospital. Has your mind been on anything in particular? Have you been thinking about anything in particular? No. Do you feel depressed? Do you feel elated? No. Have you been seeing anything by way of colors? Or have you been hearing anything unusual? No. If I were to ask you how you felt, could you tell me? I guess I am sad. I'm depressed. What sort of mental activity are you going through? Well, Ron, you said that you thought the sun was in the wrong position when you looked out the window. Yeah, I, I lost uh, time perception. Do you think that you're clearing at all, or are you still quite muddled? I don't think in the last 15 minutes anything has uh, been any improvement now. Mm -hmm. Are you anxious? Are you fearful? Are you worried? I'm awfully nervous. Mm -hmm. What would you classify your mood as? My mood, uh, apprehensive. You know about what? No. Mm -hmm. What has your mental content been uh, lately? Do you know what you've been thinking about? Just trying to keep. Uh, Things or true situations, trying to uh, be aware of it, trying to stay in contact with reality. Have you felt a waxing and waning with reality? Uh, well, sometimes I've been confused about which is reality and which isn't. I mean, uh, what little situations uh, I was aware of uh, noises, for instance, that uh, 
may have been to annoy me and may not have been, and rather than, than uh, investigate, I, I just sort of let them go. Can you describe to us uh, how this thing was uh, some hours back when you were in the middle of it? Just mass confusion is all. Uh, uh, a, uh, that's, that's it, confusion. Would you say it was pleasant or unpleasant? Uh, I wasn't aware at the time of any pleasantness or unpleasantness, and, uh, and I'm still not, uh, I, uh, I'm not uh, aware of any pleasantness or unpleasantness. I, uh, emo I'm emotionless about them. Uh, well, Ronnie, do you think the picture shows the whole story of your LSD-25 experience? Not by a long shot. The day after the experiment, you wrote out something about it. Would you mind reading a part of it? Not at all. I had very little by way of visual hallucinations, but what I consider the important thing that, well, what's the word to describe it? Dissociated, plagued, pounded, weighed, all three are inadequate to describe the horrible state I was in, all of them put together. Perhaps the central thing was suspicion and fear that you would find out about me, or perhaps think things that were not true. My overwhelming concern became, are they doing this to find out how I'll act? Are they deliberately rattling that damn paper to make me angry? On and on and on this went. And, as was no doubt obvious, I decided to do as little as possible so I wouldn't make any mistakes. It was my confusion, the fact that I had to study the situation, to be careful that, shall I say, rack me up. I believe that there was still a trace of this suspiciousness when we took you home that night. Would you mind telling us about the television experience? It's hard to believe, but I joined the family to look at television in the living room, and I'll be damned if it wasn't talking in loaded phrases, too. That made my reason take another step toward control, and I felt better. Well, thank you very much, Ronnie. This essentially paranoid type of reaction pattern has been described repeatedly by investigators of LSD-25 psychosis. During the next week, Ronnie was given a five milligram tablet of our new blocking agent, Price Daly, and one final tablet on the morning of the second experimental day. Our clinical experience with Maritran convinced us that this compound was quite different from any other central nervous system stimulants that we had known before and we were interested in the effect of some of its isomers. When the nitrogen atom is moved from the alpha to the gamma position, an entirely new compound results pharmacologically. And it is this gamma isomer of maritan which we have used as a blocking agent against LSD-25 psychosis. We were led to its use because of some dramatic, though inconsistent, results we had obtained when we used it on patients with schizophrenia. And now, let us return to Ronnie and the second experimental day. Good morning to you. Good morning. I believe you've been taking one five milligram tablet of this compound twice daily throughout the last week. That's right. And you took one this morning. All right, now here we are with one-tenth of a milligram of LSD in the still water for so down the hatch. Well, Ronnie, right, does it seem to be a half an hour since you took the LSD? Yes, sir. Have you got anything to report to us in this first half hour? Nothing. This is something to report to us. Uh, it's been an hour since you've taken LSD. What can you report for? Well, now I can definitely tell that I have taken it. Uh, but uh, my thoughts seem to be in good shape so far. Well, Ronnie, it's been an hour and a half since you took the LSD, and I've noticed an increasing restlessness in you. Uh, extreme restlessness, yes. Sir. But my thoughts are in good control. I mean, uh, I'm much more confident at this time than I was like. It's been two hours now since you've taken the LSD. Does it seem that that's right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
There, there's been no distortion of time sense no. of the passage of time. Well, let's ask you first how your body feels. It feels fine. There's no, uh, no sensations uh, one way or the other. Well, now, you've been restless. You did a lot of pacing for a while, and then you lay down for a while. Yeah. Now, what can we find out about your mental processes? Have you had any feeling of drifting in and out of the world of reality at all? Well, uh, no, no, I haven't. It's now two and a half hours since you took the LSD. Does that seem right to you? Yes, it's about right. And there has been no alteration or distortion of your sense of time? No, I don't think so. Has much transpired in the last half hour, uh, as far as you're concerned? Well, nothing one way or the other, no. Now, uh, last week you had the very uncomfortable feeling that all of us were indulging in double talk. Uh, is there any of that feeling in you now? None whatsoever. I, I, uh, I think that'd be a sort of a dissociative feeling that I don't have uh, now. Uh, anything new to report to me at this time? I don't think there's anything new. It's, uh, there's uh, been no real change, I don't think, that I'm aware of. At uh, three hours last week, I asked you that if you had Aladdin's lamp and could get your most desired wish, you said that you would wish that something could be done to get rid of the nervousness that you had. Would you answer in the same way today? I'm not sure. I I, uh, I think I'd uh, be more aware of the possibilities of such a uh, an offer uh, uh, today than I would. Ronnie, what time does it seem to be? It's uh, somewhere, oh, I'd say uh, about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in the last half hour, we've been sort of having a general discussion on philosophic things, the pitfalls and scientific methods and so on. You seem to be sort of interested in what we were. I, I followed your conversation. If you could do exactly what you wanted to do right now, or would you be doing anything different than you're doing? Well, I, uh, I could be home, if that's what you mean. I could uh, probably be doing something a little more enjoyable, yeah. What would be enjoyable in your thinking right now? I don't know, being out in, outside, it seems like a nice day out. Well, Ronnie, right, we're now at the five and a half hour after taking LSD period. You're just telling me outside that this is nothing like it was last week. It is nothing like it was last week. There, there are uh, some of the same symptoms and it uh, seems that it, uh, it were ready to happen, but it uh, just didn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when I went to uh, lie down, uh, uh, last Saturday I could have easily sort of been swallowed up, and I was trying to do it uh, then, just, just now, now, just now, mm -hmm. and uh, it just didn't happen, that's all. Uh, mm -hmm. You said that last week when you lay down uh, and closed your eyes, uh, uh, something closed over your mind. That's right. But you can't find that today. You try as you will. Ronnie, you wrote out your experience after the second episode or two. Would you mind reading us part of it? No, no. It was quite similar, yet it was so very, very different. Where the first time my mind began racing and becoming tangled and, and eventually swallowing me up, despite my efforts, the second time, my efforts to fight it off were successful. In one sentence, I think it might be summed up rather adequately by saying it was a fight both times, but the second time I won. Well, thank you very much. There are probably many questions that you wish answered about this work. And, Doctor, uh, what dosage of the blocking agent have you found to be effective? We have ranged from 10 to 15 to 20 to 30, 50 and 100 milligrams. There are individual differences. In the lower ranges, the blocking is not necessarily complete, 
but in the higher ranges, it is so invariably. Have you done this on any more subjects, Dr. Fabian? Yes, eight so far in a double-blind study, and the blocking effect was consistent. Is a week of uh, free treatment necessary in all cases? No, sir. already discovered that two days of pre-treatment suffices, and our guess is that it can be shortened even more. Did you say that this drug has clinical application? Well, time will tell, but we have been quite impressed with our clinical results so far in some cases of acute schizophrenia, some cases of alcoholic hallucinosis, some senile hallucinatory states, and even a few cases of chronic schizophrenia. They represent about 60 cases in all. And furthermore, we are continuing our experimental work with hallucinogenic drugs, such as mescaline, cannabis, adrenochrome, etc. Are there any other questions? Yes. Can MER-17 be used intravenously? Yes, and it's very interesting, too. On December the 18th, 1954, Ronnie drank a second 100 gamma of LSD-25 without protection. Four and a half hours later, he was in an almost catatonic state. At that time, 10 milligrams of MER-17 was given intravenously and repeated in 15 minutes. This brought about a complete cessation and dissolution of his LSD-25 psychosis. Look at the picture. I'm right here. Do you feel that you're very close to us in your thinking? No. No. Can you tell me anything about what you have been thinking about? Is it too painful to talk about? Ron, how long has it seemed to have been since you took the LSD? I don't know. Um, a couple of hours, I guess. Are you upset? No. Are you muddled? Yeah. Can you tell me anything about your thinking now? Ron? Can you tell me anything about your thinking now? I can't understand. How do you feel? Does anything make much sense to you now? No. What seems to be the matter? No. Can you think? No. Can you tell me what's going on inside of your head? Ronnie, are you frightened? Are you fearful? Yes. Now, Ron, we're going to give you an injection to see whether it makes you feel any better. I don't suppose you taste anything, do you? Do you feel anything? that 
You feel like you have reality in your grasp and it's waxing and waning. That's right. Can you tell me anything more about it? Maybe I said it's just a, a reorganization or a uh, uh, getting things in place again. Is it a pleasant uh, comeback, as it were, or is it disturbing to get things reorganized properly? No, it's uh, the more I can, the more it's the better I feel. Okay, we're giving you a second injection about 17 minutes after the first one. How are you feeling now? Hmm? Um, like I'm waking up from the fever or something. Is it a pleasant feeling to be waking up from a fever like this? Well, it's pleasant to be back, I guess. Bill, is there any change in his blood pressure? No, his blood pressure and pulse remain essentially the same. Why, it's been 30 minutes since we gave you the first injection and 15 minutes since we gave you the second one. Now, let's try to say how you feel now. I know it's hard. Well, I haven't, I haven't yet a foundation from which I can speak. I, uh, do you think you feel differently than you did 30 minutes ago when you walked into this room? Yes, I guess I do, very much so. Now, Ronnie, it's been an hour since we gave you your first interview with injection. I believe things have sort of, sort of come back into their proper perspective for you, Helen. I think so, yeah. Uh, when you were under the LSD, you wanted to be in that room alone. You were fearful that uh, there might be some sort of an invasion of your privacy, your integrity. Isn't that right? Uh, and now that's all cleared up, and you've got things straightened away. Is that right? I'm no longer uh, anxiety ridden about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you your normal self now, do you think, Brian? As nearly as I can tell, I am, yes. Mm -hmm. You will probably be interested in my uh, subjective reaction to this last experiment. The first and third experiments were similar, of course. Complete and insoluble confusion and, and anxiety reigned, and the knowledge that its cause was a drug was my sole and small reassurance. One hallucination was that of fl lying flat on a slowly revolving cloud-like object. There were other similar objects all around, touching gently and revolving in gear. I just rolled slowly down into the depths of this arrangement. Another one I recall is that of a flower bed type of pattern, or perhaps a purposeless pinball machine with the lights arranged in rows and columns. The lights, or flowers, were growing, then bursting in irregular fashion, one at the left, then at the center, and so on. Next occurred the phenomenon that has happened both times I lost, and perhaps I have ne neglected to mention it previously. Things seemed to clear up, and I felt sane, yet I knew I wasn't. I seemed to wake up to a new world. The same situation, same people and environment, and yet everything, that is, my mental state, my life, had been altered. I was a stranger in this world. I could no longer speak to anyone as a person. And that was my state when I was given the shot, bewildered, confused, afraid to say a word till I could be sure of which world I was in. I realized that what happened to me in those few minutes after the injection has a tremendous significance. Because of this realization, I have worked it over often since then. But God help me, I can't tell you a thing. It just happened. There was no crescendo, no fitting together of the pieces, no breaking through the surface. All of a sudden I found myself willing to cooperate, able to follow conversation more easily, 
just less anxiety-ridden. I don't know how or why. I'm sorry, but that's all I can report. <laughs>